Welcome back to the Red Dirt Road podcast here tonight. I want to apologize to everyone. Last couple weeks kind of getting these episodes out real late. It is actually, yeah, getting these getting these episodes out late. I'm going to try to get back to these the roots of this podcast and get these episodes out way sooner and, and uh, have the episodes be shorter too. And I'm, I'm excited. At the end of the year, we got... Uh, that Brooks and Dunn Christmas album we're going to get back to. And then we've got wrapping up this year. We've got, I actually kind of want to do a compilation of last year too, which I never did. And then of course the Spotify wrapped, we'll probably get into, uh, I'm guessing next, maybe in 2022. But today we've got Billy Joe Shaver, his song, I've been to Georgia on a fast train. I know that I said something about Don Everly. I threw that out. Um, I, I I don't think that we're going to do Don Everly. Just wasn't really country music. Uh, the Everly brothers are nice, but, you know, they, they, he had a, he had popped up on a, on a country music post when he had passed away. But, yeah, he's, he's really not country music. I had a couple songs that were country-ish, but not really. There's so many others. I like to get to the to the uh, the guys that have been around for a while. <clears throat> so we got Billy Joe Shaver here, and of course, how do you not know his name, right? I mean, if you're a country fan, you know it's it's dis- it's it's embarrassing to not know Billy Joe Shaver. However, as far as listening to him, I really didn't listen to much Billy Joe Shaver growing up. You know, people that that listened to me on here, they might've known, you know, when I was growing up, listened to country music that was on the radio. Cause I was a, I was a kid and that's what my parents played. So it's really been the last few years since I graduated college that I've been listening to real country music, diverse country music, not just from one, you know, not just whatever's on the radio. In fact, I don't, you know, country music on the radio. Now I don't even, don't even like at all i mean 2000s was better than now but yeah Uh, but but this is a totally different thing with billy joe shaver and so i i had listened to his the spotify playlist uh this is billy joe shaver and i figured this was probably my favorite song of his he's not really a one-hit wonder kind of guy he's a you kind of like him or you don't like him But this is his most popular song currently on Spotify. And I liked it. It was probably my favorite one. Didn't have the most streams. It had a little over 4 million streams. Really not a whole lot. But, I mean, obviously this guy's been around for a long time. He's, you know, not really a guy that's popular a whole lot these days. This song peaked at number 88 on the U.S. country charts in 1973. Or eh, I'm not sure actually when it peaked on there, but that was its peak. It was released in 1973. So not very high. Um, you know, I don't know if he had a number one hit. Obviously, this is more of a country outlaw kind of a guy, not a not a Nashville, you know, try to get those radio hits kind of guy. But number 88 only. I mean, this is one of his most well-known songs. It's obviously, you know, it's his most popular one on the on the podcast or on the uh, on Spotify. And a little note here from, you know, Norm McDonald had passed away recently, and I'm a huge Norm McDonald fan. And actually, I, I, I found it here on, on Wikipedia. It says comedian Norm McDonald was an avid Billy Joe Shaver fan and occasionally praised his songwriting on his podcast, Norm McDonald Live. In 2018, Shaver appeared as a guest on McDonald's Netflix program, Norm McDonald Has a Show, which I actually watched that. I don't actually even remember him being on there. I guess it's, it was 2018, so I probably watched it when it came out. But I've listened to Norm McDonald live. Hilarious. So getting into this song, it's got a... It's about a little under three minutes in length. It's got a 12-second upbeat band intro with a train whistle. First verse, 
So this this thing's talking about Billy Joe Shaver's life is is what I've I'm understanding from researching online. Although I will point out there's some things in here that I don't think are completely true about his life, at, at least as far as you know what I'm what I'm finding from the uh, from the old internet here. So it says he was born quote on a rainy windy morning in that old sharecropper's one room country shack. So a sharecropper is, you know, basically someone who works on a farm and, you know, pays the rent through the work, essentially, or the crops that they are helping uh, produce. And so, you know, it looks like his family would probably worked on a farm, but they didn't, they didn't own the farm. It says his mom left him on the day he was born. I did not find anything online to uh, corroborate that. So I don't think, but it says that he spent a lot of time with his grandmother growing up. Uh, he got his grandmother's pension plan, which is how they survived a lot of times when he was living with his grandmother. And he spent his time in true Texas country fashion, quote, picking cotton, raising hell, and baling hay. The chorus says the title of the song, it says, quote, got a good Christian raisin, an eighth grade education. And he apparently was raised Christian. I, I think he was raised Christian and then became not really religious and then came back. Later in life, I think he became a, a born again Christian sort of a thing. So that's pretty, that, that's pretty accurate. And then the eighth grade education, according to this, he, he left school in eighth grade to help uncles help his uncle pick cotton uh, but occasionally return to school to play sports interesting the second verse mentions this woman named caroline who he's just obsessed with he's he's you know she's he's thinking that this is the most attractive woman ever his wife's name is actually brenda so i think maybe he just put caroline in there to uh, make it rhyme maybe he says, quote, I love your wiggle and your walking and your big city talking. So I, I don't know if his wife must have been maybe from the city, but they opposites, opposites attract, you know, wiggle and your walking. I don't know. If, I don't know if Billy Joe had any wiggle in his walk, but, you know, opposites attract. He was not from the city. The next few lines here the you know, because it's kind of part of this second verse, but it's this next. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. The next four lines here. I don't honestly I don't know what he's saying I don't know what he's talking about but it still sounds good it don't make a whole lot of sense to me and he got the, the second chorus and then this outro there's a longer version of the song apparently and the one on Spotify though is, is the shorter version or at least the one that's that pops up there so there, there could be a longer, uh, longer version that has another chorus in there as well. But that's basically it. So my feelings on this song are that I like it. I think it's a, a very good Texas, true Texas country outlaw type song. And it's a good song to kind of get someone into country music if they... You know, if you maybe not, this wouldn't be to get someone initially into country music. You might want to play like a Morgan Wallen or Luke Combs, something that's a little more modern. But this might be, you know, it's upbeat. This might be a good song. You know, maybe if you knew someone that listens to some modern country but you want to kind of get them into more, a little bit more into the true country. This could be a good one. It's upbeat. It's just a good song. It's, it's a fun song. So, you know, I credit it for that. It's not, it's not always easy to get these sort of true country songs to be all, all the time, real upbeat, real kind of radio friendly. I would consider this a fairly radio friendly song or as much as you can for Billy Joe. Joe Shaver. I like it. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a story about a rugged, rugged old man from Texas that he was not really a rugged song 
you know, I mean, it's, it's sort of a clean song, clean cut song. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I like it. I like it a lot. You know, it's not really, I don't know if I would consider it a, a great song. There's nothing, nothing bad about it. He, he definitely doesn't have the, the vocals of, of some other country artists that we know, but it's very good. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a very good song. He had a lot of ones that are, that are really good. I think it's live forever is his kind of second most popular song on here. He had a song, that song with uh, Willie Nelson, which is good, but that's a good song. This is, this is a good one. Not, not a whole lot, not a whole lot bad to say about it. I mean, what, what more can you say about old Billy Joe? I'm trying to think of I, an interesting thing. If you want to learn about Billy Joe Shaver, on Wikipedia, it shows a, a shooting in Lorena, Texas. And long story short, basically, he shot this guy in Texas, like in the face or something. And he just kind of, he thought the guy was kind of a bully. And basically, like, he he was uh, arrested and then went out, uh, released on bond, went to court and pleaded uh, the, let's see, let me find it on here, self-defense, and, uh, and won. And then he wrote a song about it later. So that's, that's pretty wild. If you, <laughs> it was actually not that long ago. I think he went, he was acquitted on April 9th, 2010. That's pretty wild. I never heard about that. He also has two... Like two instead of two of his fingers, he's got two little nubs from uh, from an accident at work years ago on the uh, the sawmill, I think it was. So interesting guy. I mean, he he, but he he passed away last October, at the age of uh, eighty one. So he, he lived a long life. But Billy Joe Shaver, there we go, it, and it's and it's. It's about time that this podcast, we're starting to get into these older dudes. George Jones is going to be coming up soon. These older guys that have passed away that uh, they need to be on this podcast. And uh, this next year, I'm going to be getting a little bit more into other country artists, a little bit less into the Brooks and Dunn. You know, I, I love Brooks and Dunn, but we're going to be getting into some other stuff, too. A little bit more than we did this year, about 50-50 probably next year. So that's what you're interested in. Please follow this podcast. You know, help help me out if you can. You know, just share it. You know, give me give me a shout out on social media. If you want to be on this podcast, if you're a fan of a country artist that we don't we haven't done on here, I would love to talk about them. Uh yeah, I've I've had guests on here that have just reached out to me. I just do it from home and I'm no professional. You know, so whatever. <laughs> I'm just doing this for fun and doing it to uh, to talk about the the real good country music, not that crap that's on the radio. So, yeah, we will uh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>